Hello, 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 hello. Happy, happy Monday. Beautiful people, beautiful world. I'm your boy Cedric from The Glad Life and I hope you all had an amazing weekend with your loved ones, with your family. You got to do something that maybe you haven't been able to do for the last 18 months to two years, but now things are slowly starting to open up. Hope you got to do something different. Ah, boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I have a topic for you. What I wanted to talk to you this week is how I learned to let go of bitterness. Oh, yeah. Deep topic. Yeah. One reason why it's a deep topic is I never thought that I had bitterness. You know? I actually walked through life and I thought I was the happy person. I was the one who loved everyone. I was the one who, you know, I want to have fun. I was the, the fun guy. But what we fail to understand is that I, I had a face here, a shield, something I showed to the world, to everyone else, but then the underlayer. That's where things start to, just start to. And as you go deeper and deeper and deeper, you realize you have so much stored in there that you have not let go. Yeah, I thought I was happy, but then I had so much that I was holding on to that made me unhappy inside. And I had to figure it out because I didn't know. So many things have happened in life that sometimes we don't know how to let it go. I say in this day and age, we're quite lucky because the understanding we have of the mind compared to, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, it wasn't talked about, you know? It was, just deal with it. Deal with it, move on. You know, I don't know why you're sulking what everything that you're actually going through it stops you from being you started from me at a lot in my childhood one of the things that I had to learn to let go was about being bullied you know that's a very big topic I know nowadays. Um, and you know, where we came from, you ain't talk about being bullied. Especially if you went back home, you probably gonna get your, your butt whooped. My parents divorced when I was about, I think I was 11, 12 years old, separated. Um, I went to a private school up until January of my sixth grade. And then I changed to the local public school. Now the private school, I don't remember as much, which is kind of ironic. But from what I remember is happy-go-lucky. You know, there was very few of, um, very few people like myself, people of color. But, what I recall, didn't make me feel ostracized matter of fact I had a lot of friends matter of fact I still have my one of my best friends from high school from first grade was my very first friend we're still in touch to this day talk differently we learned a lot differently but then when I went to the public schools I was petrified I was very different from everyone talk different 
So when I went in there, it started straight away. I had guys smacking the back of my neck. Pow! I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to fight. I was too scared to fight. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my parents. People in the school saw it. Some laughed. Some just stood by. I did have this one, these two kids. They took me to the side. I need, he said, you said, you gotta do something. You need to stand up for yourself, bro. I didn't know how to stand up for myself. I carried that with me for years. I blamed them for how I reacted, even to a lot of people in my community. Because it was an old white school where I actually felt like I'd probably fit in a little bit more. And I got bullied when I went to the, the majority of black school. And when I look back at it, that phrase, hurt people breed hurt, that's all that was happening. Not saying what was happening was right, but they were dealing with their own issues. And those issues were being thrown upon me and I had to learn to deal with my own issues. It followed me for such a long time, so much that that's where I learned how to run from my problems. Now face them, escape from them, go into your mind going to a place where you don't have to deal with reality because for you reality sucked. It's a dark place, a very dark place. And it followed me around for years so much that I'm I'm pretty fortunate. I have dual nationality. I was born in England. So I have a passport for England, I have a passport for the US. Guess what that does? It gives you the opportunity that when you jack your life up in one country, you just pack your clothes and you bounce to the other country. And I did that for such a long time. Until that day came, when I realized, it's like, bro, these problems are gonna to continue to follow you until you face them head on. Now, when you wake up and you're 40 something years old and you've allowed all these problems to pile up, you have a whole lot of closet cleaning to do. And I'm not mean just talking about me coming out of the closet. I'm talking about that bullying and I'm talking about whatever trauma I allow to pile on top of me to make me bitter inside. Once I started to face it, it slowly started to inch off. I remember sitting with my therapist about three years ago and this was the first time I ever realized that I wallowed. I thought I was the most optimistic person. But when we look at wallow, you think about wallowing as, oh, woe is me, woe is me, always depressed. But wallowing comes in many different ways. My wallowing came in escaping. My wallowing came in let me go do some drugs, find some boy to hook up with so I don't have to think about how unhappy I am. Let me get something that's gonna give me, and we talk about this a lot in society today, instinct gratification. It's because that instinct gratification for that one moment in time, you're, you're feeling euphoric, you're feeling happy. But guess what, when you come back down, those problems are still right there. 
realized that, I was like, wow. I'm no different than people. I may be scouring my face. I'm like, why are you acting like this? Do something about your life. Fix it. But yeah, I was just the same. As you go through this process, you realize that there are so many of us struggling with unhappiness deep down inside. But many of us are not courageous enough to admit it. Or even courageous enough for us to look at it and understand it. taking me 40, 40, 47 years for me to really start working on it. And I'm slowly starting to see the results. Hence this channel, hence these speeches. We get a lot of people out here, motivational speakers who want to tell you about how you fix, how you fix it, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing personally myself to overcome it. Standing in front of a camera, bearing your soul about things that traumatize you is very, very, very hard. However, it's such a weight off your shoulders because you've let it out. thought of me sharing my story, my testimony, helping one person know that they're not alone, it gives me a sense of relief. So letting go of my bitterness was recognizing that I'm in an unhappy place. I need to talk about it. I need to cry, purge it out of my system. I know that we live in a society, especially men, men don't cry, gotta man up, just suck it up. But that's part of the problem because if you don't learn to deal with it and let it out, it will manifest many other ways as it did with me. Now, I'm learning to let go of things instantaneously. Do I still have things happen to me? Heck, yes I do. But I learned to understand that one, don't take it personal. Things don't happen to you they happen for you. So now when something happens, I'm like, what is the lesson in this? When I was stuck in my addiction, when I relapsed, I started thinking, or started saying, what's the message, Cedric? What do you need to take from this that you can learn so you can move forward? And as I started doing that, I'm learning to let past go. I talk to people. I will sit down and I've apologized on some of the hurt that I've done. Hurt people hurt. I've hurt numerous people. I did a video on forgiveness. And someone that I hurt years ago back in the UK who was my best friend liked my video and I reached out and I said, Thank you, you know. I'm trying to become a person I know that you saw in me. Maybe one day we might be able to get past to be friends again. And what he said to me is I said, I forgave you a long time ago, but I had to forgive you for myself. That's what letting go of the bitterness is. 
because when you hold on to that tension, to that hate, to that anger, to whatever it did to you, you're stuck. You're the one that's hurting from it. And so now, let it go. Something happens, I will talk to the person, I will confront it. is helping me this smile is real bro this smile that i wake up to every morning comes from a place of joy inside knowing that god has forgave me for everything that i've done and allow me to be this amazing person and be a vessel for him what more can i ask for why don't I? Why am I not happy? I write a gratitude list out every morning to say what I'm thankful for. The small things, birds singing, having an amazing team who helps me make these videos, having friends who care and love me, putting a message out that helps others. So much to be thankful for. I need to hold on to anything. I don't. So now, as I live, I live in gratitude. I live in happiness. I live in the present. The past has no, no reason to enter into my life except for the lesson that I may have learned. And I'm happy. Bitterness promotes hurt into depression. Happiness promotes love. I'm a person about love. And as I continue to be this person, I'm closer and closer and closer to my bad life. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much for watching. I love you guys. Keep coming back and again, if there's anything, any topic that you want to talk about, please just put it in the comments and below. If you feel this video can help someone, share it. Let them see how someone who's going through something similar that they're going through has gotten through it. That's why I do this. So peace and love to everyone and have a blessed day. Thanks.